Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to do a DIY easy fabric covered shade, lampshade for a paneled shade. So what you're going to need is a paneled shade. <laughs> um, this one I was gifted. Um, you're going to need fabric of your choice. And I wanted to show you a stripe because I mentioned it in the last video. So this is a ticking. And then trim is optional, but you can use rope or you can use the fabric to trim it out. And I'll show you how to do that. You're going to need your glue gun and you're also going to need some spray adhesive. So this is a Lean's Tacky spray adhesive that I got at Walmart, but the Dollar Tree does sell some spray adhesive too. Um, the first thing I wanted to just show you is this particular lampshade does have a round feel even though it is paneled. Um, and because it slopes in, it wouldn't be, we wouldn't be able to cover it with the other technique easily. Um, so what you really want to do is you want to create patterns. I know that that sounds silly, but I like to use a cover piece of cover stock, not just paper, because paper could sometimes not be uh, hold the ridges enough. But you basically want to lay it over the lampshade, roll it flat, and you want to rub the ribs. Uh, a paneled lampshade has the wire ribs along the way, that's what creates the paneling. So what you wanna do is you wanna lay the paper in the curve and you wanna rub where the ribs are and then you wanna cut out wherever you have rubbed. Um, now we're just gonna measure and see if it fits okay, if we did a good job and we didn't. <laughs> this is actually a little too small at the bottom so I'm gonna try again. Um, I'm gonna try to find my scraps and glue them back together and Nah, maybe I'll just create a whole new one. Okay. Um, but basically what I did was I realized that it was a little too narrow in the bottom. So um, I just decided that I would draw it that way. I know that I needed like an eighth of an inch. So if you make your panels of fabric a little bit bigger, you can always cut them down. Um, but if you make them too small, then you know you're wasting the fabric pretty much. So I'm adding a little extra to all the sides where it was short. Um, and I know that's hard to see with the pencil. Um, the last time I did it for you guys with the Sharpie um, so that you could see it on the camera. However, the edges of this are going to be seen. Um, the edges of the last lampshade were not. Um, so I wanted to show you that the edges of this are going to be seen. You can see the pencil on this fabric in person. You just hard to see it on the camera. And do you guys know about chalk pencils? So if you go to your sewing section at Walmart, they have a white chalk pencil. If you have a black or dark colored fabric, um, that would work really well on this as well, um, that you could use markings and, and it brushes off so you don't have to worry about, um, you know, uh, permanent marks on your fabric, okay? And they're really inexpensive. You can get one for like less than a couple of dollars, so. So now I'm taking the piece that I made that I dry fitted and made sure that it fit first. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create an actual proper pattern piece for it. <laughs> so what I've done is I've measured it, I've cut it out, and now I'm folding it in half to make it even on the left and right. Cause you know at the factory that this lampshade's pretty even from the left to the right. Um, and then I've also marked where it would land on the ticking. So basically, my little perfectionist side of me wants each section of this fabric to have the stripe, a stripe down the middle of each section. So what I've done is I've marked on the pattern where a ticking should line on the top and bottom to line it up. And this way, when I cut it out and when we when we mold it to the to the lampshade, you'll see it creates these really nice fine po these points. Um, so this fabric is ticking and this is in a black and white, which actually when it's up close, it really does look navy blue and white, but I swear it's black and white. That's what it says on it. <laughs> um, I've used it for lots of places in my house because I have a lot of French country decor and ticking in toile are just so French country, but ticking is also very farmhouse. It's very country. Um, it started out as mattress ticking. I'm sure you've seen like Little House in the Prairie and that's what the mattress was made out of that was stuffed. Um, so because it was a very inexpensive, durable fabric from, you know, like leftover at fabric at uh, mattress factories, it was often readily available inexpensive for the homemaker. So that's why it ended up having such a country feel to it. Um, so I'm just um, cutting out all the pieces. This particular lampshade has six panels 
the ones in my dining room only have four, so you cut out whatever you need, um, whatever the shape of your fabric is, okay? And I will mention in a bit that I didn't press mine. Now, if you watched the last fabric shade video, I didn't press it, but we were able to stretch it enough where I got the wrinkles out. This particular um, method, you don't really have the opportunity to stretch it much, so you may want to iron yours. I did not iron mine. I can always go back and add um, a, little, a little heat to it, but um, sometimes the tacky glue will unadhere in heat, so be, you know, a too much heat, I like steam, I'm sorry. Not heat, steam. <laughs> Never mind. I, I could go add some steam to it, but be careful because the tacky glue can sometimes unadhere in the steam. So what I'm doing is I've sprayed them down like I've done before with the other tutorial. I sprayed the fabric, not the shade, and I'm putting every other panel on. Because um, then what I'm doing is I'm dry fitting the panel that overlaps it, and I'm cutting it to make sure it fits nice, and I like the way these points go. Do you see that? Um, it creates all these really nice points with the ticking um, and the panels. So I'm just trying to make it as pretty as possible. And we've cut the pattern to be a little bit like a little bit larger than the actual panel, remember, so that we can fix it. So now I'm feeling where um, the, I'm sorry, I'm feeling where the rib is and I'm trimming it as necessary. Now, if you just saw there, I actually did spray the shade there is a method called, um, oh gosh, what's the name of it? Dry, dry mount, I'm sorry, where you spray the surface and, and the material and then you basically um, let them dry and then they adhere to each other, but it becomes more of a permanent bond. So unless you know exactly where you're putting your fabric and you don't want to move it, I wouldn't use that method. But if you do, like I did where I was, uh, I put the fabric where I wanted it, pulled it back, let it, sprayed it, let it dry, and adhered it this way it gives a little bit more of a permanence and then just like the last lampshade you can cut off the top and cover it with trim or you can roll over the edges which is what I've decided to do for this one um, and then I'm going to show you um, some different finishing techniques as well okay okay so I'd like to show this to you because because we couldn't stretch the fabric like we did with the rolled one as much, not all of the wrinkles came out. So you might want to press it. Do you see that there? You can barely see it, but there's enough. Um, and that might be something to consider. Now, I think this is step one and it looks great. You don't have to do any more. Of course, it will look way different if you have a pattern. But I did want to show you all about like the stripes. So I mentioned the stripes in the last video that if you use stripes, that won't work unless you, you know, face your stripes this way and you'll see. But you can kind of get the idea as, as it wraps around what stripes would do on a round lampshade. Okay, so I wanted to do stripes for a reason for you guys. Now, even though there is a front and back on this lampshade that was from the factory, you no longer can see it. So it's different than the other one. So what I'm gonna do before I decide what the front and back's gonna be is I'm gonna look at all of these intersections and see which one I think's the prettiest. <laughs> I know that's gonna sound silly, right? I kind of really love this one. There's another one. Oh, this one's like almost perfect. Okay, so um, this is just it without any binding. The hot glue and spray glue will keep this. You'll be able to dust it. Just don't be too rough on it. Try to go with the go up because the fray the fabric will fray if you brush down on it um, because it's we're looking at raw edges here 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 and here and here and here so if you brush down on it you'll get more of a fray so when you dust it make sure you dust it up okay and now I will go ahead and add some embellishments if you would like to see it and here you go so the first one I'm not gonna really do it <laughs> I'm just gonna show it to you with a piece of scrap. Let me see a good piece of scrap. This one might be this one might be long enough. Oh, here it is. Okay. I thought I saved it. Okay. So the proper binding would be to take 
this scrap of fabric okay so a proper binding would be take take a scrap of fabric with an iron fold over a half inch quarter inch somewhere in between and then fold over again and create an actual piece of binding like a finished binding piece I realized I picked a fabric you can hardly see in line and then you can glue this closed so let's actually I'm gonna do it the other way so let's run a bead of glue here let's fold in this edge and it's easy with a stripe because you can just maintain the stripe or you can actually do it on the bias would be really pretty which is basically an angle the whole way okay and to fold this like that. So of course you would do it the whole length. You would do a piece that needs to be long enough. Okay, but I can just show you real quick. Um, if we created this, then you can glue this here over the edge. Okay, just like the factory, I'm sorry, glue it here over the edge just like the factory did. So you wanna make it a little longer, you wanna glue it right on the seam to cover up that seam, okay? Now the other thing you can do is, okay, leave out the ribbon, the ribbon, 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 ribbon. Well, you know what, I can show you, uh, I got ribbon here, here. I'm gonna show you a contrasting ribbon so that you can see it on camera. This one's pink, obviously. This is just a quarter inch satin ribbon. And then you can put that over the seam, which would be really nice if you did it in black or white, okay? Um, this is the width of the ribbon at the Dollar Tree, so you can see what that would look like. I feel like I had some open already. I feel like I did, but maybe not. So. I'm just showing you, I'm not showing you to show you the gingham, but the gingham would be cute, right? Very Mary Angle bright. Um, but I just show you a little bit of a wider ribbon over, just like the, that piece of binding that was on there. The one that I like the best is the black cord. So the black cord that we used on the other lampshade, I like this one the best. Like I said last time, this one is from Walmart. Um, but they sell it at different places. You can just glue this right on the seam. It does give it a very Parisian feel with the, uh, takes it away from the country and adds it to like French country. But I think the color does that too. You know, um, ticking is very country, very farmhouse, but when you make it black and white ticking, then it becomes very French country. Um, especially when you mix it with the black and white toile. So um, we can do this and you can also then again do trim on the top and bottom, just like we did in the other video, okay? You just glue it right along the edge, all right? So that's it, and, um, hmm. I'm trying to decide. Oh, here's a piece of white satin. These white satin ribbons came with, this white satin ribbon came with something. Oh, those pails. So you just wanna glue, and be careful, cause when you glue in on, but you wanna keep the shape of the, you can't glue it tight and straight. Cause see that won't work. You gotta go with the curve. So you put a little glue, stick it down, stick it down, stick it down, okay? Let's go stick it on the lamp. So that's it everybody. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. I found it super easy. Um, if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share this video with friends and family. Anybody you know might be interested in recovering a paneled lampshade. And remember, you can do this with all different paneled lampshades. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. When you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever we upload a new video. So as always, you take care. God bless. See you next time. Bye.